so you love the show. Go to itunes.threesidesofthecoin.com and leave your review and rating of Three Sides of the Coin. Thanks. Hey, Three Sides fans. This is Mark Cicchini here doing something a little different, um, not joined by the other two knuckleheads. Instead, I'm joined with our king and leader of the KISS Army, the one and only Gene Simmons. Gene, welcome to Three Sides. Thank you so much for doing this. <laughs> um, today we're talking about the Gene Simmons Vault. Wow. Gene, no one better to, uh, to pimp this than you, my friend. What are you? Oh, oh. Here, pull that. That's what she said. Oh, there we go. Well, you know what? It could be a, uh, I think it's just a display one. This is one. a display one? Yeah. Anyways, I, if, put it this way. If you're this far into the conversation, you know all about this. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I know all about it. Gene, tell us the inspiration for, uh, for the Gene Simmons Vault. Well, I, I'm an only child. And so maybe that helps me in my sort of being a fan, the ultimate fan of me. And I know that's, that sometimes sounds cocky and self-serving and stuff like that, but that's really the only way I was able to overcome any kind of uh, problems I had coming to America, not being able to speak English, and just feeling like an outsider, even if it's, even if you're not really comfortable with yourself or have some self-esteem issues, bluff, <laughs> you know, pretend. And so that's what I did. And because I didn't have brothers and sisters, I spent a lot of time on my own and I collected everything about me. As soon as I had the good fortune of having a decent report card, I'd save it. If I got my first guitar, I'd save it. I mean, I haven't thrown away anything. So in 1964, I saw the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan Show and Within two years, I started writing songs. I taught myself how to play guitar originally, before bass, and just started strumming. And so over 50 years, from 66 to 2016, I've written hundreds and hundreds of songs. Some of them good, some of them not so good. Some wound up on Kiss records. The vast majority didn't, because some of them didn't even sound like Kiss, and because of the way I write. It's not linear, it just kind of comes out. Whatever's, whatever's there comes out. And I like a lot of different stuff. So the vault really started formulating in my mind as far back as 10 to 13 years ago. Originally it was going to be called Monster, and then Paul liked the title, and why don't we use it for a Kiss record? And that was originally the idea for this, to put out the largest box set of all time. And here it is, kids. I mean, literally, and that horn over there, that's a special <laughs> effect that the KISS editors put in after you see this. I'm thinking there's going to be a horn there, and they're going to do it because we spare no expense on three sides of the whatever the fuck it's called. <laughs> and so what's inside, even with the paper rustling in the background from Keith Valcourt of Rhino Records, can't sit still, fair enough is 167 tunes that have never been released, literally. Everything from the first song I ever wrote called My Uncle is a Raft, my apologies for that title, back in 1966 on two track, all the way to 2016. 167 songs, originally I said it was 150 songs, but I lied. I always like more. There are also three tunes I wrote with Bob Dylan, or more specifically, Bob Dylan wrote with me, including the songwriting session of Bob and I strumming guitars and joking around. And three Van Halen, Gene Simmons songs, and Joe Perry, and all the Kiss guys appear on uh, many of the songs. And then a lot of the stuff, um, I wind up playing all the instruments because I couldn't find somebody to play drums or guitar or that kind of thing. So for me, it's a journey um, I don't know how many people are interested, but I had to get this out. Otherwise, all this music and all this stuff is going to stay up in the attic and gather dust. And at some point, everybody has a yard sale, right? It's like, hey, look what I got. Not entirely a yard sale, <laughs> but I, I wanted to do it just to clear it out because I always, there are some things on here that I'm really proud of and other things that are curious and peculiar. 
and that's okay too. So that's what this is. And there's lots of extra stuff in there, and you don't have enough time in your life for me to tell you about how amazing this is. But go to GeneSimmonsVault.com. <laughs> Let me tell you, as a fan, as soon as I found out about this thing, I'm like, take my wallet now. And I, I say that jokingly, but I mean it. This is the kind of stuff that the fans, the hardcore fans, love. We want as much Gene Simmons as possible. But I don't want to do just the same old, same old. Just to give you a sense of how bad, badass this is, listen to this. That's one of the handles. If you try to pick this baby up, this is a good 40 pounds and uh, is, I think, a little over three feet tall. It has a lot of stuff in it. Uh, a gold coin about this big that says, if it's too loud, you're too old, in Latin. And it's also got a 50,000 word book. Right about now you can hear a sound of a motor going by. That's We're in the Detroit. Kiss engineers that after this is mixed, that was put on. We spared no expense on three sides of whatever the fuck this show's called. And uh, 50,000 word book, which is about yay big and yay thick with the 11 CDs in it that has tons and tons of uh, photos with everybody from Eddie Van Hale and I to even Barry Gibb and all this kind of stuff that people have never seen before. Going all the way back to when I was 16 years old. And now that I'm 116 years old, the perspective is good. Our cameraman is flirting with his girlfriend. <laughs> you didn't see that, but I did. I get you, I'm covered, I get you. <laughs> So back to you. Well, I tell you what, I was very lucky. Inside the book here, Gene, my name is in the book. I'm so sorry. I know. And I was lucky enough um, when they were putting this together, because uh, being a super mega geek fan that I am, proudly. Well, geeks rule the world. You know, when I was growing up, I was what the comic book fans call a fanboy. That's what they but, call me, too. I hear it yeah, all the time. But also, in the real world, a geek. You love what you love, and you love it passionately, because it's much cooler than Shakespeare and, and the other stuff we were forced to read. But we now rule the world, see? Star Wars, the Avengers, all that stuff. It's, it's our world now. We rule it. We used to be made fun of, especially by the chicks. <laughs> Barbie can't touch Darth Vader. Actually, she might want to, but that's another story. <laughs> As he looks at Liz, all the guys watching this know my wife is. She's cracking up back there. Um, there's also an action figure. And the cool part about the action figure, the Gene Simmons vault action figure, yeah. it's not like the normal action figures. It's not Gene all made up. He's just his yeah. looks, cool looks, self. Looks like this with this fabulous hair. <laughs> and it's, it's just as uh, shellacked and colored and hairsprayed as my real hair is. But yes, bitch, this is my real hair. <laughs> it's funny, uh, proud to have whatever it is that I've got left, but it is interesting that the older you get, the less you have up here, and the more you get on your back. <laughs> I've got hair coming out of my ears, and I'm not kidding. You know, you're in the air and you feel something tickly, and going, what is that? And you look at me, and there's a <laughs> What's that? And I have it coming out of my, I have, you know the phrase hairy ass? <laughs> I've got a cushion when I sit on the toilet seat. There's so much hair down there, I've got to comb it and put a part in it. Otherwise, I'll go, Chewbacca ass, that's me. Not the weirdest thing you ever saw. You know, I'm 52, look what I got to look forward to I'll here. I'll be 69. <laughs> Sorry. No, I <laughs> And I'm old enough to have seen the original guy that did that. Yes. yes. Not the drummer in back of it, mm -hmm. but a guy named Henny Youngman. They don't Hello. have a clue what I'm oh, talking about. Oh, are you? Come on. Yes, take my wife, please. Look at him. He goes, well, look. I don't know. You ever hear of Henny Youngman? Of course not, fucking communist. <laughs> are you now or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? <laughs> Tell me the truth. Yeah. Hmm. This is some pretty rough Senate hearings there. But uh, <laughs> anyways, Gene, I want to uh, move on just a little bit because we're going to try. That's a Paul song. <laughs> move on. I love that no, one. No, don't sing. <laughs> I know. Gene, a couple of, this is a question I need on record, and I hope you can do it, and I don't mean the vinyl kind. First night 
of the Lick It Up Tour. There are some crappy Photoshop pictures with it looks like you're spitting blood. Did you or did you not, and I need a yes or no. I distinctly heard the word Jew, but go ahead. <laughs> did you spit blood the very first night of, on stage? In, I, know <laughs> it was in Lis I know it was in Lisbon. Yes, correct. And some people think it's in Spain. It's not, it's in Portugal. The God's truth is, I don't remember. <clears throat> this was, um, had to have been, oh, I don't know, 83, Three, was it? 83. Yeah, I don't, I don't recall. But I do know that the guys in the band were thrilled that it was going to be our first show without makeup, and the poster was just my face but in kiss I, I, makeup. Which I have. The poster. Yeah. I have one of those. You're not surprised, probably. And of course, everybody got upset at me, thinking that I called it from a, make sure you just put mine in, forget <laughs> the rest of the guys in the band. I got that, you know, for 44 years. How come you're on the cover of Spit? I, I didn't have anything to do with it. Exactly. They took care of that. Creatures Tour, first night. I think it was in Denver or out that way. Snowed in, I hear. True that you did not wear the, the what came to be known as the Creatures outfits? Because these are geek questions. I'm a geek. The guys who watch the show want to know this stuff. Did you have to have sh outfits flown in? And does Kiss have any pictures? I've searched high and low that first night of the Creature Store. I don't remember. I, I wish oh, I Oh, you're killing me. Look, <laughs> look, when you get on a train ride and you look out the window, you can actually see everything that goes by. And when you get to the, other, the end of the train ride, the guy turns to you and says, listen, I was sitting right next to you, and I've been here for the whole train ride. How about that third tree on the left, uh, huh? You're right, you're right, you got me. No idea. You did see it, but it just... It, it's just weird with uh, fans, is, is as passionate as we are, that there's no record... That's a, of, of the you spitting blood first night. You would have thought somebody, if that would have happened, there would have been photos. Well, and there, that, well, there may be, maybe if you invite the fans out there, oh, hey, if you were there, you know, send in. I've, I've written for fanzines for years, and that's how this naturally turns into this. You, you try to connect with as many fans as possible. You know, you know well about doing fanzines and doing it yourself. I used to I know. publish them myself, quite a number of them. And you didn't do it for fame or money, you did it because you loved it. No, but I do want to dispel the notion that if the only reason somebody does something is for money, there's literally, not figuratively, but literally nothing wrong with it. In I agree. fact, it's the highest thing. See, look, when, if somebody worked all their life and finally accumulates wealth, you're not supposed to talk about it. But if some jackass spent no time working on anything and wins the lottery and gets $100 million, everybody goes over and pats him on the back. Hey, congrats, isn't that great? And he goes, yeah, isn't that great? You didn't do anything for it, bitch. <laughs> That's not the one that you're supposed to go, yeah, go for it. It's the one that worked for it. Amen. And the, the notion that, well, you only do it for money. Well, that's a description of the, of the work ethic of America. There are, most people go to work at jobs they don't like. And the only thing they do it for is to be able to feed their family. They do it for money. They get up at 6 o'clock every day, go to work at jobs they don't like. And the only reason they do it is for money. So why is it any less ethical for somebody who strums a guitar? No, the only reason I strum a guitar is for money. Why not? Exactly. Works. No, I love what you just said because, uh, you know, I get up every day and go to work because I, I, I want to feed my passions. If I don't feed my family first, I can't feed my passions. That's right. And, uh, you know what I mean? It's just, uh, that's how come you can buy things like this and go to concerts and travel and all that stuff. And make sure that your wife is happy, because happy wife, happy life. Amen, brother. I know if she's miserable, it. you're going to die in the corner <laughs> alone. Um, while we're getting to some geeky kiss questions, yeah. on the solo records, did you guys all aren't, have aren't an you, equal... Aren't you thrilled to death to be sitting next to me? Come I am on, super me. huge, impressed, and happy. I'm, I'm thrilled. <laughs> I'm thrilled with myself. <laughs> did you guys all have... Because you had a, you, the roster on your first solo record. Yeah. Pretty impressive. Well, there were more. Jerry Lee Lewis uh, got there too late. He agreed to be on it. Lennon and McCartney were going to be on it. Is that... That's... I, and they just, I don't know what happened. You, know, you what just happened. heard that out of his mouth. I didn't force well, it's it. it's not out of my ass. <laughs> See what I did there? All kinds of people said that they would do it. I wanted to hear Lassie bark on it. You know, imagine 
coming to America from another country, not speaking a word of English, and whatever it is you imagined, it not only comes true, but comes true in ways you never imagined. So when I did the solo record, I had the Concord jet, flew over musicians, went to uh, Oxford Studios right down the street from George Harrison and Eric Clapton's house in Oxford, England. Anything I wanted, it just beyond, and I, at the time I was with Cher, so I flew her over and mm -hmm. the kids, and just this kind of, the opulence you couldn't imagine. And so when I did my solo record, I didn't care about anything. I wanted to do what I wanted to do. And the 1978 solo record was the first sign that Gene Simmons wasn't just, you know, the guy. And I'm happy being in Kiss, trust me, very proud. But there are other stuff, there's other stuff. And 1978 solo record connects to the vault in ways that people find they understand, which is I don't just write Calling Dr. Love. There's lots of other stuff that is part of me, too. Another question being that... I never with touched the, her. <laughs> on the vault, there are three Van Halen songs. Why? No, no, why they're, well, no, they're Gene, Gene Simmons well, songs. Yeah, Gene Simmons songs that... Gotcha. Gene, Gene Simmons songs that Van Halen brothers played on. How come... How should I put this? Well, how come it took so long to put those out? I would have, I would have thought. The answer is well, you you ask a question, then you follow a <laughs> paragraph. Okay, sorry. The answer to the question is Edward didn't want it to come out. That's it. Okay, because that's what I, you know. But you heard the answer. Okay. I mean, over the years, I'd say Edward, I want to bring this out. Ah, I'd rather not. Okay, whatever you want. But I also owned, you know, I produced that first Van Halen, twenty-four track demo that I would imagine got him signed. I, I tore mm -hmm. up the contract because I didn't have enough time to work on it. We were going back out on tour, but they were signed to me. And we recorded 15 songs, 24 track in Electric Lady Studios. I flew them in. Some of that stuff I arranged, you know, that's my arrangement. But they created themselves. I take no credit for any of it. Van Halen is the great band that they are because of the brothers. And that's not taking any away, anything away from Roth. It was really the brothers. Interesting side note, some fans may not know, Eddie used to be the drummer. Mm -hmm. Alex used to be the guitar player. That's how good those guys are. And so I, I did, uh, you know, I waited this long because Edward didn't want to have those songs come out for whatever reason. And I also never released those Van Halen demos. They could have been co come out as a the, great package. Mm -hmm. I never released it. On the 2000 box set, I was really hoping to see those. And when I didn't, that's when people started going, oh, maybe they don't exist. And I'm like, I know they exist. I mean, because Gene said they exist. You know, they exist. So when, when this was finally coming to see the, the, the light of day, I was like, oh, please, God, please, God, please, God, have those on there. So There's a lot of stuff. There is also some ace lead vocal stuff where he tried singing a few tunes that I wrote I uh, tried to get him involved in the Psycho Circus thing, uh, and he was in and out of the band at the time. And it was not a happy time for Ace. He's better now. But, you know, every decade or so, there are good times and bad times, with Vincent, too, and Peter as well. I reached out to Peter and wanted to know if he wanted to drop by one of the, one of the events. You know, just a social thing, meet the fans. I spoke with Gigi, and she said, oh, great, isn't that great? And, but I didn't hear back from Peter, so... Mm. Um, Whatever you want. In the in the future coming up, my lovely wife and I have been on all seven Kiss cruises. Can't wait to get on to number eight. Gene, we love those things. We How have, much we longer? Have, we oh, have so much fun. I, let me tell you, and, and look, trust me, the people who watch the show know I preach it all the time. You got to go on the Kiss cruise. There's a reason that number eight's coming up. You will. It's it, you're on planet Kiss. It's the greatest place in the world. It's the most fun you can have. Gene, please, how many more years? Honestly, did you, how many do you foresee having? Well, we're doing another one. Uh, it's almost sold out. We actually started doing this for ourselves. It's one of the reasons I'm going around the world with the vault, GeneSimmonsVault.com, <laughs> to meet and greet every single fan who's bought the vault. We want to change the relationship between band and fan. Because when we were growing up, you know, I don't care if it's the Beatles or anybody else, you couldn't meet them. So the idea of doing the cruises, all right, a little more noise, I'm going to kill myself. 
the idea of doing the cruises or anything else is to be with the people who made your life possible. Not you so much, but them. <laughs> so we do it. Uh, we have a ball. If it looks like we're having a ball, it's because we are. We just love it. That's why I bring my family. That's why Paul brings his. We have a great time. It really is. And, and also, lastly, my, 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 my wife and I, we've met couples on the first couple kiss cruises that we are now so close with. Yeah. We go on vacations with. The family that you, I, this is the thing, Gene. Way back in 73, you guys created this thing. 1873. Yes. This huge family, and this is the culmination of it, getting to sit down and, and meet with fans and expos and all. The experiences, this is one of the experiences I highly recommend. If you have not pulled the trigger on your love gun, um, if you've not pulled the trigger and gotten one of these yet, you need to because you get to meet this guy. You get all kinds of great stuff. And uh, let me tell you, Gene, thank you so much for coming on three, what that three, well, I don't know what the hell the name of it is. Anyways, on this podcast that I do. It was a pleasure to talk to me. <laughs> it was, thank you, Gene. I get it. So you love the show. Go to itunes.threesidesofthecoin.com and leave your review and rating of Three Sides of the Coin. Thanks.